Hey everyone, in this Sigma made simple video, I'm going to show you my favorite calculation pretty much in any business intelligence technology, and that is the in date range calculation. Uh, Sigma just makes it really, really easy to do things with dates and return the right values. If I do the equivalent calculations in, say, like Tableau, you almost need like a cheat sheet. And I've actually made a cheat sheet in the past to be able to calculate pretty much anything in Tableau. And here's how you sort of would create that. You need multiple calculations. I'm going to do the same thing in Sigma with a relatively simple calculation. It does have a couple arguments. So I have this calculation already built out. Here it is. It's in date range. It says it takes a couple of arguments. You'll see here in a second. The first is to specify a specific column. Here it is, the column I've selected. It's just the date field. And then my next argument is going to be one of four options. If we take a look at it, see if I can get this to pop up. Yep. I have the options of to date, last, next, and current. You know, this would be like year to date or month to date, quarter to date. This would be last month, next month, or current month. Uh, for this example, I'm just going to select current month, and you'll see current month. The next value is the period, so I could just change this to whatever period. I'm going to use month. I could be week, year, date. And then this next value is the number of months to return. You can actually see the length here explaining it. But I just want one month. This could be two months, three months, whatever it is. Rolling set of values. And um, this is more likely to change if you're working with days. And then you can have an offset, which is just the number of periods to lag it by at any set. Uh, and then by default, it uses today as sort of the point of reference. If you want to change that point of reference, you certainly could. Uh, but this these values are going to be based on today. Today is uh, 617, 2023, just to point a reference for this video. But here we have this value. I just hit return, and you'll see current month is now true for all of June. But if I did like that, again, if I did a one-month offset here, minus one, you'll now see that this value has changed. So if I just want to do the value of this is being able to do sort of like month over month comparisons. So if I just set this to be from to date of month, so let's do a month to date calculation for this KPI. And you'll see, again, everything selected for this month. I'm just going to copy that. And I'm going to put this calculation in this comparison month and do a lag. Now you see here's that lag coming through. It's only returning month to date. So I can actually compare this month versus the previous month. And I can build out a calculation and roll these values up. So I might just say sum if. And what I want to sum is this total sales based on that KPI month value. So if I hit return, you'll notice that this value now aggregates across uh, all of these values here. How this could be useful is, and this is where things are going to get interesting because I didn't really plan this out, but if, say, if I wanted to look at this by uh, state. So I'm just going to add a group here, create new group, and I'm going to roll this up to the higher level. So if I wanted to, like, roll all of these analyses up to a higher level, I could do exactly that. So here are my values. Now I've rolled it up. And what does my sales look like at that, that high level? Well, I can add a new column and just say, let's set that to be the total sales for that KPI month. Try that again. Equals sales KPI month. I'm going to hit return, and you'll see this value roll up. I've got multiple values, so I just need to aggregate those up. And anyway, that is how you could see these values now being able to be compared to each other in a really simple way. That's my video. Thanks, and we'll catch you on the next one.